150 years ago, a community unlike any other was formed east of the Cooper. Now it is some of the most sought after real estate in the area. News 2's Colby Thielen shows us how it was built and why people who live there are hoping to preserve what remains. Between the Cooper River and the Molasses Creek, you'll find sprawling marshes overlooked by moss covered branches and bridge spires, an area known to many as Rimley's Point. But the families of those who settled here know it better as Scanlonville. Scanlonville was a community started in 1868. It was new for the South. It was new for the United States. It came out of necessity. 614 acres purchased at the height of reconstruction by a freed man named John Scanlon, who founded the Charleston Land Company with 100 other former slaves. You could become a member of the Charleston Land Company, I think, for about 10 bucks. The land became a planned community, divided into two-acre lots belonging to each shareholder free to work the land, bound only to one another. I believe the local newspaper characterized it as uh, colored communism back in the day because it was uncommon for a group of people to get together and uh, just take care of all their own needs. Teachers and stonemasons, builders and blacksmiths lending their skills to the community and the houses they lived in. You built his house, then you built your house, and, you know, and that's how a lot of the houses around here got built. Some of those houses still standing today. I've seen deeds as old as 1894. For many, that same tradition carried on for decades, but not just when it came to building homes, also when it came to building community. This is the location of the area's first African American beach and a nightclub that hosted the likes of Duke Ellington, BB King, and James Brown. It wasn't unusual to see James Brown playing baseball with the kids uh, before he performed that night. Nobody thought anything about it. But that was a long time ago. Now it's among Mount Pleasant's hottest real estate. Many forgetting how it started. Everybody's interested in the written history, but I always look at it as a living history. The folks who you're talking about that did these things, the families are still here. It's now home to multi million dollar houses and a growing fight to preserve what used to be. In Mount Pleasant, Colby Thielen, count on two.